Hi gang, Rob here. It is the evening of 8 February 2015 and I've got kind of an interesting knife in front of the camera for you guys today. This one uh, is a resurrected product line of Northwoods knives. As, as you guys know if you follow closely, Northwoods knives is the current property of or is a uh, Curated by Derek Bone of KnivesShipFree.com The best place to buy knives, period. It's been a few years since we've seen a new Northwoods knife fixed blade. And there's a reason for that. <clears throat> Derek wasn't really happy with the fixed blades that sort of came with the Northwoods brand and found himself without a great customer base for fixed blades. <clears throat> and you can still find them on the fixed blades portion of Knife Ship Freeze website or maybe the vintage Northwoods section. But Derek kind of lost interest in cultivating the fixed blade portion of the Northwoods line. and <clears throat> So it's been a few years, but He's had an inkling, an urge of late to resurrect the fixed blade Northwoods's. <laughs> and this is the first new one in quite some time. This is called the Iron River. And it is a small EDC fixed blade knife from Northwoods. Let's just see how small it is. I'll pull out my trusty Victorinox Cadet and set it side by side. I bet you're a little surprised by that picture, aren't you? Yeah, this is not a large knife. Not large at all. But pretty cool for a small knife. Let's get into some dimensions and materials. The blade is, I measured at 2 and 15, 16 inches in length. It is kind of chunky in thickness, 156 thousandths or 532 seconds of an inch stock in A2 tool steel. The handle is 3 and 15 sixteenths, which gives us an overall, overall length of 6 and 7 eighths inches. Kind of an interesting blade shape and grind, I think. I think if it had a hump and a hole, the profile of the blade would look a lot like a Spyderco Paramilitary 2 scaled down. When I first saw Derek's uh, you know, humorous video, and I'll link this one in the description uh, of him surveying people he knew about his, his new design for Northwoods, <clears throat> I saw this knife in people's hands and thought, well, that reminds me of the old Schrade Sharp Finger, although this is not a trailing point. The spine is dead straight. I think it's the fact that the, the spine takes a pretty sharp turn right at the front of the handle that sort of gave me that Sharp Finger vibe. Uh, a very small blade, just like the Sharp Finger was, out of fairly robust stock. <clears throat> now the the Sharp Finger was a deeply hollow ground blade. The Iron River is a saber ground and convex ground blade. Now because it's convex ground with some rather familiar handle cues, I bet you can tell if you're paying attention who makes this knife for Northwoods. You guessed it, Bark River Knives in Escanaba, Michigan. And I've got it all fingerprinted up again, don't I? You guys laugh at me for doing this. Somebody told me if I washed my hands and dried them well before I make the videos, I wouldn't fingerprint my knives. Hmm. <clears throat> Perhaps I should try washing my hands once in a while. So let's talk about this handle because it's kind of interesting. All Northwoods Iron Rivers will come with this carbon fiber bolster 
and it is secured by epoxy and two small Corby bolts. And then behind these bolsters, we're going to have a variety of handle materials as we're used to seeing from Bark River. Also epoxied and Corby bolted on, then with a stainless lanyard tube at the back. The handle shape is in this view, looking down at the spine, classic Mike Stewart, classic Bark River. In this uh, side view, something a little bit different. <clears throat> uh, because it's a shortish handle, just under four inches, this surface of the pommel or butt of the knife is angled inward much more than we normally see on a Bark River knife um, because it's not a four finger knife. Well, it's not four fingers inside this peak. It's three inside the peak and then the pinky is given that generous angled surface to lock in on which is really quite comfortable <clears throat> in about every grip whether it's saber grip or the overhand pinch grip or the hammer grip and the draw cut grip it's kind of interesting how that, that same surface sort of lies against the fat of the outside of your palm and then in this draw cut grip, again, it does interesting things interfacing with the hand. Just a, a really nicely designed little handle. You know, can you come forward on that thing if you were going to use it you know, to gut an animal? Absolutely. Enough belly for skinning. Enough full thickness to be super stout but with enough distal taper and that saber grind to form a nice thin tip. Now, <clears throat> you guys know if you watch my channel much that at first glance, this blade doesn't seem to be my style. You guys know that uh, A, I'm not a big fan of, uh, of Scandi grind style bushcraft knives. Not that this is one but the geometry is real, relatively similar. Derek calls this a convex saber grind. It ain't far from a Bark River uh, Scandi Vex or convex Scandi. It might just be a little bit deeper or higher than uh, you might see on the, for instance, Ultralight Bushcrafter. So I was maybe just a tad skeptical of its cutting ability and so I got this in the mail today Derek uh, called me I think while I was at the bank on Friday and told me he was sending me one to review um, and full disclosure uh, I get to keep it <laughs> this was sort of a I don't know if it was a prototype per se but it's one that has been knocking around the knife ship free uh, warehouse for a few weeks as these have been coming to fruition and it had done a little cutting and <clears throat> so it couldn't be sold as a new knife i did spend the afternoon with it today uh sharpened it up and let's just kind of show you where we're at with this thing now remember pretty wedgy geometry it goes from you know not really a zero grind but a pretty tight little convex at the edge up to 330 seconds thick and scarcely over half an inch of blade height so it's kind of wedgy but let's let's take a look at in the initial sharpness and slicing ability this is of course my initial sharpness not quite that good I would imagine out of the box but Okay, it's push cutting limp catalog paper. So, <clears throat> I might not be a huge fan of really obtuse primary grinds. I might not be a huge fan <clears throat> of Scandi grinds, but there is something magical. Oh, and I'm not really necessarily a big fan of 330 seconds stock in a sub 3 inch EDC knife. But there's something magical 
about convex grinds, isn't there? Because you can shape them in an infinite number of ways. Ooh, ran out of blade. But you can see what I'm talking about. You can make what would, in a flat ground, secondary beveled blade, um, a horrible cutter, you can make that same raw blade blank into something that actually works. And man, <clears throat> let's just take a look, cut up a little cardboard, and you would think it would kind of bind and get stuck and not exactly glide through cardboard. And I'm cutting this double wall cardboard sort of on the bias almost straight across there you know is it is it going through like a Gail Bradley no but it's cutting it not bad but that's really not, I don't think, a, a cardboard cutter-upper. Let's take a look at, uh, I mean, it's just not the design use, but it'll certainly do it. Let's see, uh, with a sort of emulation of, of, uh, of a Scandi, let's see how well it feather sticks. Since my, uh, <laughs> my view is obscured by the camera and the tripod, it's hard to be very precise, but you get the idea. Not too shabby. Now let's see what kind of a bite it will take out of this little chunk of pine. I'm going to try to sort of just push cut this in at about a 45 degree angle right in the middle of the belly. Not bad. And again, magic of the convex. The blade doesn't get stuck. It just bites and releases. Man. Touch up that edge on my pant leg. Get any pine tar off of there that might be hanging around. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good little cutter, and you know what? At first glance, you wouldn't think it is. <clears throat> and man, think it might be kind of strong for a stubby little thing. Quite interesting, and I think rather daring uh, of a design. I think this is almost a selfish Derek Bone design. I've spent enough time uh, talking to Derek and corresponding. I know that there are some elements of this knife that are things he just dearly loves. Uh, he loves A2 in a fixed blade. He likes saber grinds and scandy grinds. Just, you know, one of those things I don't necessarily share with him. But I'm getting it. I, I get the wisdom, especially um, if it's done with a convex grind. You guys can see it actually does work in a pretty neat way. And Derek also likes lots of belly, and you sure get it. You know, knives with lots of belly and pointy tips are just so versatile. You know, it doesn't really matter if they're drop point, clip point, um, straight spine, even a trailing point. Uh, a lot of belly and a sharp tip 
give you so much versatility. You know, can you skin or gut uh, with a pointy tip? Absolutely, especially if the blade's short enough to let your index finger shroud that tip. <clears throat> it's great for food prep. You can roll it on a cutting board type surface. Uh, just so many good uses. And just a right size handle for a variety of grips without you know, overwhelming the blade length. You know, the handle is an inch longer than the blade, which is a proportion we're pretty used to seeing, uh, those of us who are into folders. So it doesn't look odd at all, you know, versus other fixed blades, where we're used to seeing a handle shorter than the blade. You know, the hand is only so big, you don't need an 8-inch long handle on a fixed blade knife. <clears throat> but I think rather attractive little proportions on this guy. Now let's talk about the sheath, which is also kind of interesting. Um, and just so you know, cause, so you guys, you don't, you eagle eyes don't have to point this out in the comments. This was a prototype sheath. It is missing a stitch. So on this side, you can see where there's no stitch between this hole and this hole. And on the back side, you can see that it's not captured right there. <clears throat> Um, not a problem. I believe we've got this melted so it's not going anywhere. Uh, so here, here's the deal on the sheath. It is, uh, it is a one-way only sheath for the knife. So it, it must be inserted this way. Um, you, know, you can't flip it over 180 degrees because it does follow the contour of the blade. If you notice... It is one of Bark River's new, or I think Sharpshooter makes these, um, new rare earth magnet retention sheets. And on this one, if you guys saw my review of the Adventurer 2, the Bark River Adventurer 2, I thought they put the magnet in kind of the wrong place. It was up here it's a, uh, in the handle area. <clears throat> this one, we've actually got it down where there's blade. It's actually grabbing the blade, so I don't care how hard you shake that knife, um, whether you're hanging upside down, <laughs> swinging upside down from a tree, the knife is not coming out of the sheath, um, but easy enough to extract. I do really prefer uh, the fitted slip-in sheaths, especially on small knives, to ones that have retention straps and snaps. Just so much easier to have a, a sheet that's well fitted with good retention, magnet or no magnet, that you just slide your knife into and it's home. I uh, love that. If, you're, if you've looked close, you're already going to know what I'm going to tell you. It is a dual positionable sheet. It can either be worn cross draw with the belt going through these two loops. <clears throat> Now you could flip this knife if you're doing uh, horizontal carry. You could flip it over for a lefty carry. Your belt would run through here, your body being here. Um, but then the handle would be between the back strap of the sheath and your belt, so you'd lose any advantage. If I were going to carry this cross draw as a lefty, I would probably carry it in front, uh, right of center, and then I would come at the knife like this in a cross draw horizontal fashion. Uh, you can also wear it vertically using the vertical belt loop. <clears throat> Just a pretty tidy little package for a sheath. And did I mention it's got excellent rare earth magnet retention. Now I'm not sure uh, what Derek is trying to pull on this particular knife. He told me he's going to send me one for review because somebody told him that I kind of like the looks of it on his Facebook page. And yeah, just, you know, don't worry about sending it back, he said. You can do whatever you want with it. Beat the snot out of it. You know, just keep it. Okay. But then I got to looking closely when I got it out of the package today. Hmm. 
it's not black G10. It's black canvas micarta with carbon fiber bolster. Now, if you guys watch uh, Derek's YouTube channel, you know that Mike Stewart of Bark River Knives is featured in some of those videos, usually to introduce a new product or a new run of an old product for Bark River. And he almost always does his videos with knives handled in black canvas micarta. And he always says something like this at the end of the video. You'll notice that this particular Northwoods Iron River is in black canvas because this one is mine. So I'm going to post this video and I'm going to make it public. And if I get a call from Mike Stewart saying, how come you haven't sent my knife back? You got me, Derek. You got me. <laughs> but I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. I'd kind of like to hang on to it anyway. That is all for this one, my friends. And by the way, uh, typical, amazing Bark River construction. Um, I'm really glad to see that when Derek decided to uh, resurrect the fixed blades in the Northwoods line that he decided to have Bark River make them. Because they do such a nice job. And that is all for this one, my friends. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember the word and my Northwoods Iron River are sharp.